um, good evening. Welcome uh, to this tutorial on how to create uh, a student uh, registration application. In this tutorial, we are going to create a simple student registration application using server-side Blazor. Uh, the technologies that we will use in this tutorial are as follows. We will use SQL Server, we will use uh, C Sharp, we will also use uh, Blazor, and we shall also use a, a, a proprietary technology called Razin. So the first business we are going to engage in is to, de to design our database. Now in order to design our database, we will ensure that SQL Server service is running. So we'll go to the services folder. So now, so um, as we can see, SQL Server is running. So now that we have assured ourselves that SQL Server is running, the next thing we are going to do is to start Management Studio so that we can start the database. We can design the database. So we close services. Then we are going to start Management Studio now. I just so Square Server Management Studio is still starting. So now we are going to connect using a Windows authentication. So we'll click connect. So now that we have connected to SQL Server, we will now go ahead and create our database. So we'll right click, we'll right click on database folder. Then we'll click on new database. So uh, let's give a name to our database. So let's call it school DB, which is short form for school database. Then we click OK. Now let's expand the databases uh, node. Then we have school DB under the databases node. Now let's expand the school DB nodes. We right click on tables, then we say new table to create a new table. Now the first table we are going to create is classes table. So we are going to have class ID, uh, the data type, let's make it int. Then we have class name, the data type, let's make it n backer 50. And then we right click on class ID, we make it primary key, we say set primary key. Then we go down under column properties, we set identity specification for class ID. We change the its identity so property from no, we change it to yes. Now um, we are going to make class name to be compulsory. Now, in order to do that, we will uncheck the class name checkbox here. Then the next thing we will do is we will right click on uh, the table and then we say save table one. We give a name to our table. Let's call it classes. So we we'll click OK. Now, uh, we want unique values for class name. So we'll go ahead, we we'll right click on class name, we say. Then we click on index six through keys and we click on heart. Now after clicking on heart, we change the type from index to unique key. Now, uh, what columns do we want to participate in our unique key? We want class name to be the only participating column in our unique key. So we click the ellipsis to the right here. We change the participating column from class ID to class name. Then we click on OK. After that, we click on close. Then we make sure that we save again by going to file and then we say save classes. Now, having done that, the next stuff we want to do 
is that we want to create um, uh, a table for students okay so how do we go about that so we right click so we say new say table so the first column will be student ID the that type of this will be int then the students got a first name the data type for this will be nvaca 50 the students got a middle name the data type for this will be nvaca 50 the students got a surname the data type this for this will also be nvaca 50 now the student is got a gender that we will store in a related table called gender ID later. So the data type for this will be hint, and um, the student is going to go get a photo as well. The student's photo, okay. And then, so for the student photo, we are going to use a data type called NVACAR max. Now we need to know the class that the students belong to. So we are going to create a property called current class ID. Thus, this current class ID will tell us the current class that the student is in. Okay? So the data type will also be int. Okay? At this juncture, let's save our table. So we, we call this table students. Hmm? Then we click OK. We click what? OK. Then we right click on student ID column, we set it as primary key, then we set it as identity by going to the column properties and then we expand identity description, we change its identity, so property from no to yes. Now we want first name to be compulsory, so we uncheck allow no. We want surname too to be compulsory, we uncheck allow no. We want gender ID to be compulsory. We want the student photo to be compulsory. They got to upload the photo. Then we want the current class to be compulsory as well. So we go ahead and then what do we do? Click save students. Okay? Fine. Now the last stuff we are going to do now is that we are going to create a third table called genders. So I right click on tables, new, I say what? Table. So I have gender ID and the data type is int. Then I have gender name and then the data type for this will be nvaca50. Then I make gender ID primary key by right clicking and saying set primary key. Then I save my table as what? I right click and say save table one. I save it as what? genders then i click ok i want gender name to be compulsory and in the gender table i want unique values in the gender name column so what do i go ahead to do i right click on gender name column i select indexes through keys i click add then the type i'm trying to create will be what unique what key click the ellipsis to select my participating columns and but participate participating columns will be what gender name i click ok i click close then i go here again i say file save genders okay now let's check so i've got this guy to be is this guy identity no 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 it's not yet identity so i make it identity that gender id so now i've made gender id column to be identity okay now, having done all this, uh, having, having had all these three uh, tables now, the, the, the next stuff in the lab, in the, that we are going to do in database design will be to create relationships between the three tables. And like I told you earlier in an earlier lecture, we use what? Database diagram. So I right click on database diagram folder, and then what do I say? New database diagram. Says could not obtain information about you. Okay, I think it's got to do with uh, you having limited access, right? Let's see. Do you still remember your SA password? 
prayer. Now, please connect us uh, SQL Server Authentication user. Hmm? Eh? Just go ahead and connect. It's part of the lesson. Guy is not typing. The stuff is not typing. Okay. Okay, it's connected. So let's disconnect from this. Now let's use the system admin account. So then one thing before that I want to do before going ahead is to change the owner of the database from your Windows account to system admin. That's SC. So I click here, go to properties. So I click on files. This is the current owner. I want to change the current owner. I want to change the owner to what? To SE. So that's SE. Say OK. Say OK. And I say what? OK. Now let's go ahead and create data these diagrams again. So you see now, when I right click, say new database diagram, it asks me this question. This database does not have one or more of the sub support objects required to use database diagram. Me. Do you wish to create them? I say yes. Now what do I do? I select all the three tables, I had them. Then what do I do? I click close. So what do I do again? I drag from gender ID, I drop on gender ID here. I click OK, I click what? OK. Then I drag from class ID. Oh, I drag from class ID to current class ID. I click OK, I click OK. Now what do I do? I right click on the database diagram to save it. So I say save diagram whole. I'm going to accept the default name. Bam. Say yes. So now, by using the database diagram, we have created a relationship between uh, the three tables in our database. Now it is time for us to develop the application that users are going to use to fill uh, this. Uh, so let's minimize this. So please go to the folder where you put your project. So create a new folder there. Call it a stu student student reg reg app. Student reg app. Click outside. Thank you. So now the next thing that we are going to do now is we are going to start Radzin. So I click on Radzin. I click on Run as Administrator. Ask me this question. I say yes. So Radzin is starting now. So Radzin is starting. So I go to File, Say New Application. I use Blazor, I select Blazor. I'm developing the Blazor server side app. Now, as for my team, uh, let me select Humanistic. Hmm? So, the name of the application will be Student Reg Hub. Hmm? Now, let's select the directory that we just created. Go ahead. Um, the next thing we are going to do is we click create. So we click create. Bam. So now uh, our new application has been created. So we we'll close this window. Now the next thing for us to do is to create a data source for our application. So we'll go ahead, click on data sources, click 
click on new let's type a name for our data source let's call it con data then the server name will be dot slash j the database name will be school db are you following we'll leave it as sql server authentication user sa please put in the password thank you now the next thing we are now going to do is to infer the schema of the database so we'll click infer schema so Razin is busy inferring schema right now Um, verify that the instance name is correct okay let's see let's go to SQL server let's look at the insta instance name let's click cancel for now okay let's minimize this we are SQL server okay let's right click on the server that's the prop server right click on it here and we'll go to properties hmm? oh the name of the server is just j i think that's where we made the mistake so please go back to rising so let's go again server name is j no um data source name will be con data server name is j database is cool db we are using sql server authentication so let's say please input the password so let's in fast schema again So everything is fine. So this time around, we are going to tick generate um, pages for CRUD operations. Uh, and then we are going to change our date format to DD slash two big games so we are going to use the format call for in the that we use in nigeria which is dd slash mm slash yyy let's leave all the defaults the way they are for now okay so then we click finish then we go to my applications again we select student reg hub then we click on run So, uh, the .NET Core uh, Software Development Kit behind the scene is compiling our application, okay? So, we wait while our appli application has been started, then we are going to enter some dummy data. So our application has started. Here we have hmm, this. Now we don't like the name that uh, that this stuff has got. So we still need to do cons some customizations. We are going to change the header of these two classes. So how do we do that? We are okay, we are okay with this one genders. We are okay with this one students. Okay, let's go to genders and enter two genders male right if i try to uh save 
without entering the gender name, say gender name is required. So validation is taking place. So I say female, say save, okay? Now, we want to customize the headers for classes. How do we do that? We go back to Radzin. Uh, we we'll stop the application. So, um, we we'll come here, we we'll we'll click on this, then we we'll change the text here to classes. Okay? Are you following? Then, uh, we we'll go to this one too, just to check that everything is fine, okay, no header. Then the next thing is the in the navigation menu. We want this one too to become classes. So where do we get the nav navigation menu? Where do we get that? To get the navigation menu, you have to go to under layouts. So we'll go to layouts, and the layout that is showing all this stuff is called the main layout. So I click on main layout. I click on this panel menu. Then I go to the items. I can't see anything now. I can just say populate from application. Now it loads all the tree. Okay. So I click on this one. I change this text to classes. I'm going to leave the path the way it is because the path is the page that it's actually linking to. So I click done. Okay. So now I run again to see the changes that have been done. Okay. Let's drag this a bit. So here's the changes that have been done. So let's go ahead and re register a few classes, okay? So let's click on this. Click on save, say class name is required. So let's go ahead and create primary one. Let's go ahead and create primary two. Let's add one more class, primary three. Primary three, okay? Hmm? Now let's look at the student stuff. Now when you click on the student stuff, this doesn't actually look as something like something that allows you to select a photo. And then we want this one to be choose class. It will be class. Or maybe student class or current class. That will we'll do. Then we change this caption to choose class, student class. So let's go ahead and do those changes. Now in order to do those changes, we go back to Radzin. We stop the application. Okay? We we'll go to pages. Now um Let's go ahead to add class one. That's the page that allows you to register. Okay, sorry, add student. We want to go to add student, sorry. So in order to do some changes, or oh, let's validate some of the, val let's uh, customize some of the validation messages here. So I click on this, I just put space here so that it becomes first name is required. This one, surname is required, it's okay. This one, I will change it from gender ID is required to gender is required. Now this one is photo is required. Now for this photo is required, I'll click on the text box. I'll delete it. I'll do what? I'll delete it. I'm also deleting the required validator for the photo. Now I go to toolbox. I go to here, toolbox. So I look for a control called file input. So I drag and drop file input. Okay. Now, what's the value of this? No, this is different. The value is dollar student dot photo. 
So what happens is that we have um, uh, Ragsin has, is, has created a, co a, a corresponding object whose name is the same as the name of the table we created earlier on. So the name of that object is student and we can as assess the various properties of the student object by saying dollar student dot. So if I want to get the photo property, I say dollar open parenthesis student dot photo. So as it is now is is uh, accepting any type of image. So uh, I'll change this text to upload student photo. Hmm? Are you following? Upload what? Photo. So I'm good with that. Now the next thing is I want to make the student photo to be compulsory. Remember? So I go to my toolbox again. I I look for a validator. As immediately I type VAL, all the validators available are listed. So I want a required validator. So I track after this. Now, which component am I validating? I'm validating the file input. Then the text is student photo is required. Okay? Student what? Photo is required. Good. Now, for this, I click on this, I change this one to current class. Are you following? Ah, uh, change. I will change this one. That's the message that is showing here. Where can I change that? Uh, okay, this is it. Placeholder. So choose class. Hmm becomes that okay then this one becomes a uh, current class is required so as an assignment for you go ahead and customize uh, the edit page okay let's just go ahead and uh, and validate uh, and customize the edit page as well hmm? for the students okay so we customize the validate the the validation the validation messages we check this one to gender is required hmm? Uh, this one will become current classes required. Uh, change the label of this one to current, the text of this one, sorry, to current class. Current class. So we change the placeholder for this one. We change it to what? Choose class. I think that's that. Hmm? Then we'll go ahead, we delete the text here, delete this one too. We'll go to toolbox, we'll bring in file input. Are you following? Drop. Then we change the property of that one to dollar student dot what photo do you remember? So close that uh, change this text to upload student photo then make Students photo compulsory by bringing in a required validator at the back of the file input control. 
also required validator for it. What component are we validating? File input. Student photo is required. Hmm? As text message for the validation. Student photo is what? Required. Think. Yeah, I think we are good. Are you following? Then there is still one more thing. Let's go to the pages. Let's look at the student lists. Now look at the photo. Hmm? So now uh, let's customize this grid. I'll click on the grid, then let's go to columns here. We don't want the student ID to show. Now uh, we'll, co we'll, we'll change the heading of this one. The title now is class one, so we we'll change the heading to current class. Hmm? Current class. Now let's go ahead and run our application to see some of the changes we've done. Okay, so we'll click run. Here is our application that started. So we have classes, we have gender. Let's go ahead and add a new student. Let's add Mary Jane. First name. Son name is Jane. Okay, let's say middle name is Jane. Son name is Alan. Eh? Alan. Okay, Salen. So we select gender, female. Let's upload the photo. This one. Okay, so let's upload the student photo. Yeah, that'll do. Let's go again. Okay. Now choose class. Let's say primary three. So we save. But there is an issue. The photo doesn't show here. So we are going to correct that now. Okay. How do we do that? Now for us to do that, we we'll minimize. Go back to right thing, we stop the application, we click on students, we go to, we click on the data grid, then we go to columns. So you come to photo here. You know that's the one we want to customize. You want it to show thumbnails, okay? So then you go to template, template, click on template designer, hmm? then you go to toolbox, then you search for image. Are you following? Mm -hmm. Then the path, the path for the image will be uh, just pick photo. So data dot photo. Then you go to style. You don't want it to be too big, okay? So we change it to thirty px by thirty px. Okay. Hmm? So end template editing. Hmm? Now after saying end template editing, let's run and see what we got. You we'll see run. Minimize. Let's pause. Close the application. Hmm? Up. Up. Mm. 
be recording the course. So we are going to run our application now. Um, we had uh, some technical issues because uh, the the internet connection on the app, on the PC and that. So now that we've restored internet connection, go ahead and run. Okay, so you're yeah, recording. Good. Okay, here we've got the stuff. Uh, while developing with Razin, uh, I are using custom uh, security. You can log in with admin. Admin. Okay. That's during development. Okay. So now, uh, like, okay, yes. So you come here, you see rows, click on rows, add. Hmm? Let's create a row called admin. Now, let's create another row called teacher. Hmm? Add application row. We create another row called what? Teacher. Now, let's sign out of the application. Now, now please go back to Razi. So we are going to stop Razin. Now we are going to assign rows to all the pages in our application. Okay. So um, add application row. Let's right click. Let's go to properties. Uh, right now, anybody authenticated means anybody that is logged in. We don't want that. So. We, Clear, and we want to lay admin to see that okay say save add applic we, we click on add application user we go to properties we don't want anybody that is logged in to see it we only want admin to see it select click save add class one we go there properties we want only admin to see it as well are you following? So it says save. Same thing goes for eh? gender. So we want only admin to see it. Hmm? Now for art student, we want both admin and teachers to see it. How do we do that? Select admin select teacher are you following you click save application rule you want to let admin to see it application users we want to let admin to see it But what did I do there? Application users, I mistakenly said teacher. We want to let admin to see it. Hmm? Class, we want only admin to see it. Okay? Edit application users, we want only admin to see it. Edit class one. We want only admin to see it. Edit gender. We want only admin to see it. Edit students. Both admin and teachers can see it. Hmm? Admin, teacher. Genders, only admin will see it. Hmm?
register application user only admin will see it how about profile let anybody that is logged in authenticated with anybody that is logged in which right now is equivalent to student head and teacher sorry which is, which right now is equivalent to admin and teacher okay let's leave it as anybody that is logged in now register application user only admin will see it hmm? Are you following? We want registration to take place inside. You can't just like we don't want you to register on the then st student stage. Both teachers and admin can see it. Hmm? Admin teacher. Are you following? Now we we'll go to the login page. We click on the login control we don't want people to be able to register so we want to check this box okay so now let's look at what we've done okay Let's log in as admin admin, which is used during development. Let's go here. Let's create two users. First user is benmuiwa at yahoo.com. No, let's create a Benjamin SQL server at gmail.com rose admin hmm? password confirm password Let's create another email called Mary Kelly at yahoo.com. Hmm? Rose teacher password. Confirm password. Hmm? How come I'm only seeing? Okay, refreshing. I have these two. Are you following? So now I log up, log out. Now I log in as Mary Kelly at yahoo.com. Are you following? Then I enter my password. This is all I can see. Just students. I can have students. I can be students. I can delete students, which I'm not going to do. But I can't. As a teacher, I do not have functional. I do not have access to the functionality of the admin page. Okay. So log out. Now let me log in as Benjamin SQL Server at gmail.com so I click login and here I have access to more functionalities than the teacher I have access to the three entities in our application yes or no then I also have access to the, the user setup now in, in the next class that we are going to have, and that class is going to be a bit slower. Uh, there are situations where the inbuilt 
um, application security that comes with RAGSI will not suffice, as in you will not meet the needs of the organization. So uh, the next lessons that we'll be doing, we'll look at how to write, how to implement custom application security. And that's going to be, I'm going to take things much more slowly. Thank you, enjoy your day.